In this video, I will explain how lab results from antimicrobial susceptibility testing, or AST, turn into an S, I, or R on your lab report. My goal is that you will gain a greater understanding of AST interpretation and will apply good judgment when reading lab reports. In AST Part 1, I discussed the laboratory procedures with an emphasis on broth microdilution. The minimum inhibitory concentration in micrograms per mil is only useful for determining the best treatment plan for your patient once it is correlated to expected drug concentrations in the live patient. The same is true for the zones of inhibition obtained from the disc diffusion method. Who makes the rules for interpreting these laboratory results? Here in the United States, we follow standards published by the Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute, or CLSI. I mentioned CLSI in AST Part 1 because they also set the standards for performing AST. The interpretation standards include an up-to-date summary of our current knowledge of drug efficacy in various scenarios. Interpretation criteria for a particular drug are typically specific to the host species, tissue of origin, and the bacterial species. We do not have standards for every possible scenario, and this leads to no interpretation, which I'm sure you've seen on a lab report to your great disappointment. To explain how interpretations work, I will give you an example for the two most common AST methods used in veterinary diagnostic laboratories, the disc diffusion method and the broth microdilution method. For both test methods, I will use the same example a Staphylococcus pseudintermedius isolate from canine skin and focus on just two drugs for the sake of time. We'll start with the disc diffusion method. If you think that a bigger zone is better, pay attention. In the tables, you can see the published interpretation standards for doxycycline and clindamycin for staph from canine skin. A zone diameter of 24 millimeters around the doxycycline disc results in an intermediate interpretation. A zone diameter of 21 millimeters around the clindamycin disc results in a susceptible interpretation. This illustrates the importance of not comparing the zones of inhibition between drugs, but rather comparing each zone to the appropriate interpretation standard. In this example, the drug with the smaller zone is actually the better choice. As I mentioned in AST Part 1, my lab uses the broth microdilution method. This is an example of one of our reports. It includes the drug name, the MIC value, and the interpretation. S for susceptible, I for intermediate, or R for resistant. The tables shown here contain the standard interpretation criteria for the broth microdilution method specific to our example case, which I like to think of as the expected serum concentrations. In our 96 well plate, doxycycline is contained in three wells and clindamycin is contained in four. You'll notice that a different concentration range is tested for each drug. The minimum inhibitory concentration, or MIC, for doxycycline is determined to be 0.25 micrograms per mil, which is interpreted as intermediate susceptibility. The MIC for clindamycin is less than or equal to 0.5 micrograms per mil. We can't determine the actual MIC without testing lower concentrations of the drug. While that is not possible in this commercial 96 well plate, it's also not necessary to reach an interpretation. The interpretation for clindamycin is susceptible. If 0.5 micrograms per mil are needed to inhibit growth in the lab and our expected serum concentration in the patient is 0.5 micrograms per mil, then we can predict that the organism will be susceptible to clindamycin in the patient. It is common for people to lean towards selecting the drug with the lower MIC. However, in this example, you can appreciate that the drug with the lower MIC was not the best choice. Let's take a moment to debunk some common myths about AST interpretation. A bigger zone of inhibition equals a better drug choice. Nope, not true. A lower MIC equals the better drug choice. Again, not true. The truth of the matter is that MICs and zones of inhibition cannot be compared between drugs. Laboratory data must be compared to CLSI guidelines, which are based on in vivo data, to predict drug efficacy. In summary, don't overthink it. I've explained where AST interpretations come from, really to tell you to just pay attention to the S, I, and R on the lab report. 
the lab has already correlated test results to CLSI standards, so you don't have to worry about that part. You have other drug factors to consider, such as the route of administration, the dosing frequency, safety, and cost, just to name a few. If the drug makes sense, considering all of these factors, and the lab report says that the organism you want to treat is susceptible to this drug, then you've made a great choice. I hope you found this helpful, but don't hesitate to call the diagnostic lab and speak with your friendly microbiologist for any questions you have regarding AST interpretation. Thanks for watching.